Hey everybody, it's Crystal Ann Compton. How are you guys doing? It has been kind of a while since I've gotten up on YouTube and made a dedicated video just for you folks. I want to start kind of by apologizing only because I've just been swept away with all kinds of new things that are happening in my life, both, both personally and also with my work. And in specific with my work, I just got finished giving a class on interdimensional energy and I'm in the process of preparing for a retreat that I'm gonna be putting on and hosting in the fall of this year. And I'm also writing a book and so there's just a, there's just a lot going on. Not to mention my spiritual community, which is presently hosted on Facebook called The Lightworkers Lab, is thriving. We have a lot of new members and we just have a lot going on there. We have teachers, who teach on a variety of spiritual subjects. We have readers, intuitive readers and energy readers and healers who also get up and offer their services and let their light shine before the community. And we also actively equip different light workers um, so that they can go out and do what they came here to do, whether that's healing or Reiki or intuitive readings or motivation or guiding, things of that nature. So that community is growing fairly quickly up until May 2017, the doors were actually closed and I really didn't talk too much about it because we weren't ready yet to allow new membership. And at that time, membership was just people who had taken my courses or who had gone through one of my programs or even former clients from when I used to professionally read people. And those were the original members of the Lightworkers Lab, but now we have our doors open and we are inviting everybody to join. It's free and it's protected, it's safe. I've got, I think, 10 moderators. We're always making sure everybody is receiving what they need and it's a place for resources. It's a place for information and it's also the place I tend to hang out the most. I'm really, really active in the lab. If you're interested in becoming a member, again, it's free. All you have to do is go to Facebook and search The Lightworkers Lab. Now, there are a couple of other groups out there that popped up since we have and sort of started to take our name, but we are simply The Lightworkers Lab. And at present, we have, I think, a cover photo that has like a little beaker or something. Anyway, just ask to join and either myself or one of the mods will let you in after you agree. <laughs> There's a question that you receive when you ask to join. You have to agree not to spam us or self-promote or do anything lame, okay? <laughs> if you agree to that, then hey, you can come in, no problem. I wanted to make this video though, kind of along those lines. You know, in the Lightworkers Lab, as I said, we're equipping lightworkers to have a space to just fellowship and hang out with people of like mind and also to develop their own abilities, bring them into form so that they can share them, whether that's professionally or just in their lives. We've all come here to do something and it's something that only we can do. See, I can't do what you came here to do. Only you can do that. Likewise, you can't do what I came here to do. Only I can do that. And we've all come into this life equipped with a specific set of skills a specific set of talents and abilities. And it is our duty, it's the reason we're here. Our duty is to use these abilities in our life to make this world a better place and to elevate human consciousness. See, here's where people trip up. They tend to think that light work is something really important. I must be a Reiki master and go out and teach thousands of people. I must write the great American novel, I must be on Oprah in order to fulfill our life purpose or to do light work. And that's not at all what it is. Disabuse yourself of this notion that in order to be occupying your life purpose, you, you've gotta be doing something great. It's gotta be grandiose. That's not it. In order to fulfill your purpose and indeed to be a potent, powerful light worker, all you have to do is figure out where the light lives for you and then hook into it and shine it. Where the light lives is where your joy lives. It's where your, your, your excitement lives. It's where that energy lives. For some of us, that's with our families. We get so much joy from just playing with our children. Some of us, it's writing. We get 
clicked into this real high vibrational creative zone when we're writing our book or we're, when we are journaling or things of that nature. Some of us get a lot of joy just by going outside and working in the garden and preparing food that's organic and fresh and feeding our families. There are so many different normal, mundane ways that we can find the light, find the energy in our lives, hook into it and then run that energy. Allow the writing, allow the children, allow the garden to fill you up with light and happiness until you're vibrating with it. You know, you feel it in your whole being. That's how I feel when I go outside and I get in my garden. I just, I feel alive. I'm touching the plants, I'm talking to the trees, I'm talking to the little fairies. I feel so high vibration and the work is finding that. Where does that live for you in your life? And then being there more hanging out in the energy of that light. When you're in bliss and when you're in ecstasy, you are in the energy of God. That's how the physical body in this 3D reality recognizes God. That's a familiar feeling to us. That's how we feel it in our body. So stay there more. Remember when two energies come together, the dominant energy, the stronger energy always makes a substantial change to the lesser energy or the more passive energy. And in this scenario, the dominant energy is going to be divine energy. It's going to be God energy. It's going to be love energy. And so when we find it and then hang out there, just dwell a while in the high vibration of love, it allows that love. It allows that source energy to make substantial changes to our baseline signature. It changes who we are. That's the work. Where does that live for you? Find it, hook into it and stay there vibrating in it. And then go get in your car, drive to work and stay in the vibration. Get out of your car, go into the coffee shop. Maybe you want to get a latte, vibrate at that accelerated rate. Get back in your car, go to work, sit in your cubicle and vibrate with the joy, with the light. That, my friend, is light work. That's all it is. If you can manage to tap into love and to run love in your physical body, body, mind and spirit. If you can allow the light to permeate and saturate all the systems, all of the awareness, all of the energies and then shine it, point it out to the world, then you are doing powerful light work and you never have to say a word. You never have to say a word. All you have to do is walk around the planet in that space and in that energy. We need more people doing that. The simple things, just occupying the light and occupying the vibration. Can you smell what the rock is cooking? <laughs> Can you smell what spirit is telling you? Because we need to let go of the expectations. Expectations are the root of all suffering. We think I should be here by now. I'm 30 years old. I don't own a house. I don't have a great job. I am a failure. We've got expectations. We have people in our lives saying, well, you should be doing that. You shouldn't be with that person or you should be with that person. Expectations, expectations. None of that matters. All that matters is that you figure out for yourself what you love and you do it more and then you point it outward. Then you're changing the world. I used to ask myself quite a lot, who's more valuable in terms of energy, in terms of shifting the consciousness? Is it Mother Teresa, who I understand is a questionable character to some, but let's just use her as an example. Is it Mother Teresa who is helping the poor and who helped the, the orphans and the children? Or is it the yogi who sits on top of a mountain day in, day out, just oming and blissing out and connecting through meditation with source energy, which of these two individuals is in fact more powerful and more helpful on the planet. And I used to think that it was mother Teresa because she was doing good work. She was being proactive. She was following her purpose and doing that work. But now I know that that is valuable. Doing good works and helping and being charitable and expressing love through deed is extremely valuable, but so is staying in connection. So is finding the socket and then plugging into it and just hanging out there, blissed out on a mountaintop for hours. You are changing the consciousness of the entire planet. You are helping Gaia, our host, our mother, 
You are helping her to nourish and replenish just by sustaining a high vibration. It's incredibly powerful. It's incredibly valuable. So let these ideas and expectations about having a grandiose life purpose, let that fall away. Sure, at the end of the day, that may be exactly what's waiting for you. Maybe it is fame. Maybe it is a great American novel, and that's great. But for right now, just concern yourself with plugging in and staying plugged in. Remember, the avatar Christ said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. It's his energy. And all of these things shall be added unto you. All of these things happen so miraculously, effortlessly. You don't have to chase them. You don't have to go find a publisher. You don't have to go find somebody to open a door for you to walk through. All of those things happen effortlessly when we seek first the kingdom of God, which is the kingdom of source. And how do we feel source? We feel it as light. We feel it as love. Seek it first. Seek the light. Seek the love and everything else happens in divine order. Now that's good news. That's the real gospel.